Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin our study here, just finishing off uh, Judges chapter 12. Can we begin with a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are very grateful again that we can open your word together. Um, we ask, Lord, that um, we can have your presence that your Holy Spirit that inspired the scriptures can be here uh, to enlighten us. We know, Lord, that the things we are looking at are new to many of us in the sense that um, the responsibility that lies before us is becoming clearer and clearer. And um, we sometimes don't know how to take the things that we find in your word how these things written thousands of years ago can apply to us directly at this time. But we know, Lord, that you are leading, and we just ask for your continued guidance. Be with each person as they struggle through this world of sin and suffering, as they struggle through the problems in their lives. We ask, Lord, that we can have faith and confidence in you and what you are doing in spite of what we see. Be with us now as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so not as many of us here this morning as I expected because uh, some of the usuals aren't here. But uh, we were on Thursday, we were finishing off uh, Judges chapter 12. And uh, Ran and I were just discussing a little bit earlier I was dealing with this, um, these verses here, Judges uh, 12, verse 5, uh, Judges 12, verse 6, and 12, verse 7. Now, the symbolism of 12, 6, of course, we know that's the 1260. It's also the, the shekels in Daniel chapter 5, um, all kinds of representations. That, that we have in this movement. And um, we also have the 42,000 of the Ephraimites that are slain, which is a symbol of the 1260, of the 42 months. And I suggested, well, and also we have December 6th, which connects us to um, what was happening um, in the movement at the end of our 777 structure. And then I suggested that it's uh, December 26th and uh, Stephen, who's just coming on here now, you know, he, he sort of said, well, I don't see that we can do that. Aran and I were talking about this and Aran, how did you word this? What we were doing with the 12, six and making it December 26th. I just said it was, yeah, it's a set union. Okay. And we've seen this lots of times. Right, so just because one number is left out, it doesn't mean you can't uh, do that. And an example of this would be the 153 and the 1533, correct? Yeah. Okay. Stephen, you can see that? Yeah, that's suppose that is an example that we had used. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, and then... I was I was thinking about uh, verse five, um, where the Gileadite, Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. Now, I, I was thinking about what happened on December twenty fifth, so that's twenty twenty one, and what I see is that there is the, this battle going on between within this movement and. What you found on December 25th, to me, that's kind of like uh, the Gileadites taking the passages of the Jordan before the Ephraimites. That is, we, we're, we're on the opposite sides of things, in a sense. That is, um, the 777 years that you found on that day, from 457 to 321. Because we know that December 25th, we had as a symbol of the Sunday law, right? Yes. And and so when it comes to this shibboleth, this is 
a lack of understanding on the part of the Ephraimites, a detail that they're, they're not able to frame to pronounce correctly. And, and so there's sort of this departure in this, in a sense, within this movement of these two lines of study. Because before that, you know, primarily we were still studying together. After that, it became much more difficult uh, with, with Colin's prediction. And so, so I would take uh, Judges 12.5 as also representing December 25th and Judges just as we did with Judges 12, 6 being December 26th. And then it finishes with this 12, 7. And the thing that I'm still, I mean, obviously we have the six years being a symbol of, of six times six times six, a symbol of the Sunday law. But it's tied to this symbol 12, 12, 7. And 12, 7, of course, is July 21st. That's midnight. Um it also has the symbol of being um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, if we took it as a date, in 1941. It's also, um, uh, you know, on the charts, dealing with, uh, so it does represent the midst of the week as well. Um, so there's lots of things about uh, Judges 12, verse 7. Now, I still, in some ways... I'm, you know, think it's odd that we can take these verses as we've gone through Judges in this way. But part of it started with Judges 2, verse 1, uh, representing 2001. And, and that would be an example where we take a date and some of the numbers are missing as well. So, so we've started with that premise once we've noticed that in Judges chapter 2, that this is representing the history of this movement from uh, well, Judges 2, verse 1 to 2, verse 23, which would be 2023. And, and we've seen to be able to have done this actually quite easily in, in the sense of they fall into place. It doesn't mean there isn't a lot of work that we've had to do uh, because this is months of work. And hopefully we're not, um, you know, being myopic when it comes to looking at this. Um you know, that we're, that we're looking at this rather broadly. But the fact that we can take judges and we can apply it to this movement in this particular way still kind of strikes me as rather amazing. Uh, something that's written so long ago, and yet it's talking to us at this particular time. We're not saying that that's the primary application of these verses by any stretch of the imagination. But that God has designed within his word to illustrate our history, to give us instruction and direction at the very time in which our feet are upon the path, I think is rather remarkable. And I hope people recognize that this is, is quite amazing, that, that we can do this, that we can be looking at these verses that are speaking about our present situation, that we happen to be studying them at this time. And, and I've noted how um, we're going to have the anniversary of starting this series of studies on December 26th. And, you know, that's going to be uh, number 252 in the studies. And then, of course, when we get to the end of that line in January 11th, 2023, that's going to be study number 264. So... When we take all of these symbols, we can take 12, verse 5 being December 25th. Um, and I know Dwight missed some of this here, but we were looking at Judges 12, verse 5, just like we could take 12, verse 6 and see it as uh, December 26th. We could take 12, 5 and see it as December 25th. And, okay. I, was, and I was mentioning that uh, Gileadites taking the passages of Jordan um, this is where we come to this, uh, you know, Stephen finding the 777 years from 457 to 321 on that okay. date, on the very date that Colin presents his um, study on Trump. Right. Um, is us, like us, taking the passages of Jordan, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's logical. Okay. Yeah. 
and and then we we take each of these verses and we find all of these symbols in them. Um, so the shibboleth is this, they're, they're not able to frame, to pronounce it correctly or right. That is, there's a part of this message that they can't understand, that they can't, they can't grasp in a sense it's hidden from them. Does that make sense? Repeat that, please. So, so they can't pronounce the shibboleth, right? They can yeah. only sibboleth. So it's close to the message, but it's short by a dot of the shin, right? Okay. So so that would represent this change that's happened in the message that that the one group can understand, they can pronounce, they can frame it, but the other group cannot. Right. right. Because, because we're taking the men as the Ephraim to represent those in this movement who are at odds with the message of of um, Jephthah, which is the message of July 18th, or more specifically, we're saying that this has to do with this message that we're we're presently studying, right? So this this under this understanding of the lines. <clears throat> so, um, so then I was looking at 12 or seven. Of course, we looked at the symbols there. You know, Pearl Harbor. Um, uh, on the 1843 chart, the 12 times seven uh, connected with time in the sense of uh, um, the the metonic cycle. Also, of course, July 21st, midnight, if we read it in reverse. Right. And um, and then the thing about the six years, all that I could gather from that is uh 216, which of course represents um, uh, six times six times six, because six years, of course, times 360 is 2160. Um, so we've had that symbol many places. So, anyway, that's where, where you know, we, we had finished off with that. And um, while well, we had finished that before, I just wanted to review that. And then we had started on Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. Oh, and the one other thing too about uh, taking the the date um, twelve six is representing December twenty sixth. We have an example of that with fifteen thirty three and one fifty three. So, so would we also be able when we go into into thirteen thirteen five also being like thirteen thirty five? Well, yeah, I didn't look at thirteen five yet, but uh, but yeah, we could we could pos possibly do that if the story gives us illustration to do that. Okay. Right. So what what, what we have done is we had already we had already sort of established this without without using these symbols, right? So once we have the symbols there as a witness, I mean they're not the reason we didn't you know find these verses and then decide well they must mean this because you know they have these symbols per se right right and and of course we started with this whole thing this whole premise with judges 2 verse 1 which represents 2001 and of course the two zeros are not there and and 223 representing 2023 of course one of the zeros is not there so so we have all this precedent built up in how we're we're approaching this and the fact that this is illustrating the history where we are right now that it's light at our feet presently i think is is remarkable and then we dealt with ibzan elon and abdon and we we haven't really nailed everything down here what we do know is that the seven years the ten the uh, 10 years and the eight years represent July 18th. So this represents 718, um, that order, especially on how uh, Hebrews write their numbers because they would write 10-8 uh, to write 18. Because <clears throat> they don't use Arabic numerals. 
Um, so, so, and also this representation of 718, um, what's the significance of that? July 18th. Okay, July 18th, but why 718 itself? I mean, I know it's July 18th. Right, so we had from uh, the siege of Washington, D.C. on December 6, 2021, to December 24th, 2022, which is coming up, uh, 718 days. So, so 718 has shown up in spans of time, but especially in connection with where we are right now. Okay, so because normally we look at 187 or other things like that, but here we have it being represented as 718 or 710 plus 8. So we'd write it as 718 if we we're going to write it this way. And um, so in, in this passage, too, um, I mean, we're dealing with this history of December 25th. Um, so we could, um, even if we went back to 1224 or, or 12 verse four, that can be December 24th, whether we're going to do this all the way through, I don't think so. Um, but we have, uh, the, where we're making this invitation is for December 24th for the, for these groups to come together, the American and the Canadian group and our group. So, and if you look at this, it says, Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. So this is the accusation, right, in a sense of what we are doing. So I don't know if we want to go back and take that as 1224. 1225, 1226. But, it, you know, it seems possible we could do that. We could take this whole section and line it up that way. <clears throat> so that would connect this, these message, these three judges who there's no enemy that's oppressing them that's being mentioned at all. Um, and, and there are some symbols here that we've looked at. So just in reviewing this, uh, Ibzan of Bethlehem, what was it that we noticed about this? What, is the, what are the symbols there? We have the house, the house of bread. Right. And we have... 30 that's repeated three times. Yeah. Plus you have the fact that he was judging that at least that portion of Israel for seven years. Okay. Yeah. So we have the, the seven years and of course that's a 25, 20 in and of itself. Right. Okay. And Anything else there? What was it about his name? Well, it means splendid. Right. Or splendor or something like that. Um, actually, it, okay. So when we look at strong, strong says it means splendid. Um, I'm not quite sure how Strong's gets that. Uh, I mean, he doesn't give basically other than he gives H76, but that means to belch forth as an inflammatory pustule, as eruption or blains. So 
Um, so I'm not sure how we get splendid from that. But that's all I'm saying. Um, I mean, an inflammatory pustule is anything but splendid. Yeah, yeah. So um, but that's the definition he gives us for whatever reason. Um, now, one of the comments from the chat does have an interesting point to bring up because is there a comparative between Judges 12.9 and Judges 10.4? Okay, so 10.4 was, and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts and had 30 cities, which are called. Yeah, and so that's one of the things we'd have to look at too. We know about the 30 there in Tola and JR. Now, um, so this is going to be in dealing with the situation with Abimelech, right? And Abimelech is this inheritance from Parminder's movement, right? It's it's a um, oh. uh, I mean we we dealt with this. Now, what did we do with the thirty? Did we have any? I mean, to me, it's a representation of a month. Well, first off, after this, we we noted that Jair, who was in Gilead, judged mm -hmm. Israel 22 years, which, of course, is a symbol of, of restoration. Yeah. So, so we were placing this. So this was after Abimelech. Right. And yeah, so here again, at, at this point in the Tola and Jair, we didn't, it, it's actually very parallel in the sense that you have a major enemy that's defeated. And you just have basically a defense, right? There isn't a particular enemy that's oppressing them, right? Okay. <clears throat> So we, so we have that same sort of parallel there. So could we just say that this Tola and Jair are, are representing basically the same history? Um, Um, because I think what I did with that, the 30 there, because um, um, we had these three 30s and they represented three days, but they also represented the months and that connected us to the story of Ezra. But didn't um, we also take the entire time period of Tola and Jair and relate that to the 45 yeah, on, yeah. on the chart? Yeah. So, so it brings us to the same history all the time. At the end of these thing, uh, end, end of these oppressions, you have this period basically of peace where you have some other judges, right? Um, and and that seems to be what we're pointed to here in this story as well in chapter twelve. But but also in connection with um, Judges nine, when we had drawn that on a line. Uh, we had these 88 months, which we had from the story of Ezra, and that brought us to April 5th, 2030. Um, so, and then we had, of course, we looked at the midterm elections and we had the 2,688 days with that IRS form number 2688 being this application uh, for additional extension of time. And, and that pointed us to April 5th. But it doesn't bring us into that history, right? The whole idea here is that we're brought to the end of this period. Um, and then 88 months follow. So this begins the divorce, right? In the story of Ezra, the 88 days. Um, so yeah, so, that, so that's a good point that... Uh, Uh, that we can see this parallel between these two sections. So, yeah, so when we get to, whoops, here, went too far. 
Um, and then you have this 30 mentioned as well, three times, right? In both of them, is it not uh, three times? Thirty sons ruled them. Thirty ass coats, and they had thirty cities. Yeah, so we, we have the thirty mentioned three times again. Right. So, so in trying to figure it out, you know what what this means particularly, I I don't know. The only th thing I can say is that if you took this as 30, 30, 30 as a number, that number is interesting in that it's divisible by 666. Uh, 455 times. And it's also divisible by 777, 390 times. And it's. Um, Can I ask a question, Theodore? Yeah. What about the thirty dollars? Yeah, but they only mentioned the thirty-three times. So, so I mean, the thirty daughters in the sense of there's thirty sons, thirty daughters, right? Right. And and he took the and and he took in thirty daughters, right? So there's thirty daughters sent out, and thirty daughters taken in. Now, now, of course, the 30 daughters are to 30 husbands, but the point <laughs> here is that 30 is mentioned three times, not four times. <laughs> right? So, I mean, and daughters, of course, can represent churches. So I, I'm not sure uh, what this particularly means. I mean, in the context of the strange wives, right, and Ezra, this is dealing with marriages, but here in this case, it's not a divorce. It's it's a marriage. Marriages are occurring here. But um, anyway, so this number of, if I took it as 30, 30, 30. So there, I mean, it has lots of divisors. One of the divisors is um, like, it, it can be divided by, any number like one 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 two 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 three 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 four four, well, not four four four, um, five 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 six 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 seven seven seven, and so those are the only ones. It's not divisible by nine nine nine. It's not divisible by four four four. Um. What about uh, 273? Um, yeah, it's divisible by 273 as well. Yeah, so that one I missed. But but the 666 and the 555 and the 777, I mean, the five virgins is a symbol. So five is an important symbol, 666 for the mark of the beast in our line 777, but also the 273. And it's divisible by 273. Um, one thousand one hundred and ten times. And that that can represent January eleventh. Correct? Okay, yes. So if that can represent ja January 11th, which is where we come to at the end of this line in 2023, um, that just can be another symbol attaching this to, to this line, to that period of time. Hmm. Okay. 
but whether you know whether we do that i think we can do that we can just line up the 30s and make them 303,030 i don't see a reason why we we can't analyze it as a symbol that way but i think the primary symbol is relating to the 3 days and the and the months the symbol for a month but it also ties us to chapter 10 so we can see that this is the same period Uh, the symbol of the 2520, of course, seven years. And then the house of bread, this having to do with, uh, you know, God's word. And other symbol there dealing with that because that can deal with the mana as well right that was sort of the idea right right dwight you had brought that up because christ is the bread of life the bread that came down from heaven right and then i'd connected that period from april 26 1990 which was part of the structure with november 24th um so it's fourteen thousand five. 588 days, the number of days from when the manna first fell to when they go to gather the manna and it no longer has fallen. And so there's that whole structure of that diagram that led to April 5th, 2030. Um, and then, uh, so then after him, Elon, a Zebulonite, Right, and we know that the symbol of Zebulon, that was Odilio's study, dealing with the 57,400 57, days, I think. Yeah, from May 23rd, 1863 to July 18, 2020. All right, so he had this structure dealing with his tokens, harbingers, harbingers and signs his study on that, which I expanded a bit more. I, I could probably show you these diagrams that I'm looking at just. Right, so this is the, the diagram that I worked out based upon what Odilio had presented. And I thought this was an important study. So Odilio did the study dealing with the mandates, which was an important study. It gave us a number of these symbols and how to count things. He gave this at the very time when we were looking at um, the numbering of the tribes of Israel. Um, so, so it was timely and it helped us to understand more about these numberings of the tribes, how they relate to periods of time. And I still haven't finished all of that work on, on that. Um, but so we can see the Zebulonites, um, those, that's a message that goes to July 18th. Um, so, in the context here with the Zebulonites that judged Israel 10 years, we know that that's a test. And July 18th is a test. Is it not? Well, I would think so. Yeah. And then the symbols attached there are the 40 sons and the 30 nephews that rode on three score and 10 colts. And he judged Israel eight years. So uh, the significance there, um, a lot of different things, but the four and the three, a division of the seven trumpets, um, seven churches. Um, even you could divide all of the, the like the seven last plagues, of course. Um, so there's, and and you can also really, uh, I mean, there's so many things that you could divide as four and three, so many different sevens that are divided that way. So what, what about the um, the seven, the seven, um, the seventy on the end of that? Well, right. So the forty and the the, th the three and and the thirty, right? That's just together that 70. So you got the 70 representing, of course, uh, 
Leviticus 26, the 70 years, the captivity. So you got um, that as well. That's the three score and 10 ass coats, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, 70 of them. Right. And then we have the symbol of Islam there as well. So this thing that we've seen suggested is su suggested is that uh, the message of Islam and its significance prophetically will become more pro prominent as this message moves on. Right now, it's not really being talked about too much because we made these predictions regarding Islam that never came to pass. But those predictions still stand in the sense of what they mean, just not when because we looked at the structure incorrectly as far as predicting when. We had the right place, right? We had the right event in a sense, but that event was placed incorrectly. Um, though we have the right time, but that time is part of a bigger structure. So the event is still, still symbolically uh, valid. Just like you could with the Millerites. I mean, you can say they had the wrong time for the second coming, but they had the correct day, the day of atonement. But that event was still correct in a sense, because that day of atonement is connected to the second coming. Because when the day of atonement closes, um, it's also connected to those events. This, the day of atonement is more than a single earth day. It's a period of time. <clears throat> And an Abdon, um, so we had Elon, and then we have Abdon, right? So, um, which has the 40 sons, 30 nephews. And then he's this, so when they mention Abdon, um, it's kind of interesting. So they say, after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Pirithonite, judged Israel. And then they're going to have the verse dealing with the 40 sons, 30 nephews, and the three score and 10 cults, and that he judged Israel eight years. And then they're going to say, and Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, died and was buried in Pirithon in the land of Ephraim in the Mount of the Amalekites. Now, why would they have to list him again as Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite? Why would they have to repeat that? Couldn't they just say Abdon? I mean, they do the same thing uh, with Elon the Zebulonite, and they sit, do the same thing. Um, but they don't do that with Ib, Is, Isban. They don't say Isban, Ibzan, the Bethlehem. He's just of Bethlehem, right? So he's not called a Bethlehem, Bethlehemite. But it doesn't say, then Is Ibzan of Bethlehem was buried at Bethlehem. I mean, so... I mean, maybe that's why the difference. But why, why do they have to repeat that? I mean, is there any significance in that, in, in the structure of how they repeat these things? I need to go back to the Bible here so we can see that. <clears throat> So that's a that's a um, is that a um, relative of um, Zebulon? Relative of who? Zebulon. I don't know who you mean. I'm sorry, I'm I got the wrong one. I apologize. Okay. Okay. So what we can say about Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon is it refers to this period of time where there is no oppressor. And there are three here mentioned, where in Judges 10, we have the two. Uh, uh, which I can never remember names. Tola and Jr. right? So they're going to parallel each other. A question. Yeah. With what the translators were looking at, 
we have Ibsen being a, a type of civil judge in Northeast Israel. Yeah. They say the same thing about Elon. Mm -hmm. And they say the same thing about Abdon. Yeah. So there's civil judges. Yeah. But all in Northeast Israel. Yeah. Okay. So if they're they're basically all serving the same area from you know during this time period. Isn't now that's that's not an area that the Philistines would have attacked. That would have been more the Ammonites mm -hmm. on the east, right? Yep. So we have Ibzan of Bethlehem. Now, is Bethlehem of Judah? Well, it beat Bethlehem Ephrata. So I would think, um, I mean, it would be Bethlehem. Is it in Judah? I mean, it becomes in Judah later, right? Isn't that what happens? How does that work with Bethlehem? Remember when we were studying Bethlehem? Right. Um, it wasn't originally placed in Judah, was it? That's what I'm thinking, that it was not. Yeah. That it was more in that of Benjamin. Yeah, it's going to be that city, I would think. I don't think this is going to be, I don't know. I don't know of any other Bethlehem. Okay. Now we have... <clears throat> Elon, who is of the tribe of Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And he is, he's buried in Ajalon in the country of Zebulun. So we have that to consider. And then Abdon, <clears throat> son of Hillel, a mm -hmm. Pirithonite. What's important about Pirithon? Um, it's uh, well, it's it's mentioned in Second um, Samuel and in Chronicles. Um, because he's the son of praising and Pirithon I mean it only comes up five times in the entire Old Testament mm -hmm. yeah so I don't I don't know particularly anything about it Because in <clears throat> First Chronicles 11.31, it gives reference that this pertains to the children of Benjamin, Benaniah, the Pirithonite. Yeah. Okay, now another comment from the, um, from the chat dealing with the seven, 10, and eight years, that seven could represent perfection or Sabbath seven times, 25, 20, which we've already stated. <clears throat> eight could represent the priesthood or resurrection and mm -hmm. 10 being a test or remnant. Mm -hmm. And that's all built into the 187 from which you count 187 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, which would tie into all those symbols already, right? Agreed.
I mean, so, I mean, what we can say for sure is that this relates to the time that we're in or we're coming to, I guess, with this invitation to the other groups, whatever it means particularly. We have these symbols that tie us to the end of this structure. Um, so, and, and, you know, we have these 30 as well. So remember if we take, um, uh, 187 months, we had that symbol, which we got at the beginning of this understanding of the lines where we were studying about uh, the covenants with Abraham, right? So we had taken uh, the chapters, chapter uh, 12 times chapter 15 times chapter uh, times chapter 17. Um, so we got 67,320, which was divided by 187. And that, um, what did I just do there? Um, gave us 360 years so those are 360 prophetic years and then i had also noticed the similarity of that number to 67920 which is the number of days from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030 which is uh 2300 uh literal months and then we also had um 2300 or we had 187 years and 20 prophetic months that also led us to April 5th. So, so these thirties, they also tie us to 2030 in various different ways as symbols regarding months. But still this history is just dealing with the history ending in 2023 but giving us these symbols that point to 2030. Is, is that fair enough? Is it clear enough? Didn't we address this last time? Yeah. But, but it, I just wanted to be clear to people that I think that what, what's being given to us right now is the same thing that's been being given to us for a long time, going back, you know, 10 months at least. Um, but shortly after Colin had given his study on uh, Trump, um, we, were we're we were able to see that we have this date 2030 and that this continues, that this message continues. It's not ending here. The Sunday law is not coming in 2022. Uh, that this movement is still this work to do. And I'm just saying that this is helping us again and again to see the same message. But this is a message where these judges aren't dealing with an oppressor. And, and, and the question, why is that? These judges aren't delivering them from an oppressor. That, that work has already been done. So what would that mean for this movement? moving forward. Is this just, develop, this just demonstrating the development of this message from now on? That we're not going to have an oppressive message that is a false message mixed in with what we're doing? What if there, there is not an external 
component, such as as what we were seeing with the the others when we're dealing with the other nations that came against Israel, like the Philistines or the Ammonites. Yeah, well, they did have internal enemies before, right? In a in a sense. In a sense. Right. But this is, you know, we're noting at this point that there is not an external message creating an issue. Right. But there's this is the development of a message still in this period of time that's going to be given us. Okay. And also we have um, these civil judges. I mean, we don't have a king. Right. So God isn't calling us to organize our movement in, in the way that they were trying to organize it previously. Right. Right. But yet there still is. And, and these are messages. So these are messages that are going to be coming to this movement, but not in opposition to an oppressor. Okay. I'm just doing a calculation here. Um, I know it's kind of frustrating when I'm just doing this on my own here without you seeing what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so I have a suggestion um, because this is representing a message and it gives us these periods of time, but we, we, we can see them symbolically, right? Right. And Maybe in some way they these messages are combined. So what I, what I mean is, what if we took seven times eight, or seven plus eight plus ten, but divided it by three? What do we wind up with? Um, you get uh, twenty five. Let me see. Hang on. You get twenty five divided by three. Is eight point three 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 three. So you get this number is, and if this was a span of time, I mean, there's different ways to interpret it. Um, if we did it as uh, um, just prophetic time, you know, this would be eight years. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to change up a little bit for you. Okay. And you're going to have to do a little rounding here. Okay. Seven times 10 times eight. Okay. So that's another way we could do it. So you're going to get um, uh, five, five, sixty. Now divide that by three. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you get 186. Um, plus uh, two thirds. So if you round up, you're at 187. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting that we can do that and still get 187. Which we never, I, I don't think I've ever thought of that one before. Okay. So we can have 187. Now, if we have, um, if we if we added them together and divided it by three, we get eight years and 120 prophetic days. If we used it as prophetic years, now if we took um, 8.3 uh, times and we just took it as literal time, so that would be 
three times 365.25, you would get 3,043.75 days. So that's 8.33 years. And if we were to count from, uh, well, if we went to April 5th, 2030, so that's the date that we have. I mean, we have other dates as well that are connected symbolically. But if we just took this, this number, 30, well, we'll do it at 3044. The interesting thing about that number is that's, that's um, the, you know what a length of a month is. So it's, it, I mean, it's, it, it's dividing these into months. Um, because a month uh, you know, on the Gregorian calendar is 30.4375 roughly uh, days in length. So here, I'm just going to show you this calculation so you see what I'm doing. Easier for people here. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do this whole calculation again. I'll bring up my scientific calculator. There. Okay, so what we're going to do is we take... Um, 8 plus 7 plus 10, well, that's 15 plus 10. So that's going to be 25, right? And then we're going to divide it by 3. And we get this number, which is 8 years and two, uh, one, third of a, one third of a year, right? So 8 and one third years. And then um, I'm just going to put it into days. So I'm going to multiply it by 365.25, and I get this number here, 3043.75. Uh, 3, now, if I was to do the length of a month, so a um, simple way of looking at it would be if you take 365.25, and, and you can see why, because I'm just dividing this by by through by 30 or, or pardon me 365.25 divided by 12 i'm going to get this number right so that's the same number but that's that's not that unusual based upon the fact of how i'm doing this calculation because this is years and it's just so i'm taking these numbers of years and dividing them by three and then multiplying them by 365. Does that make sense to people what, what, what I did? Can we see why that, that, that ends up being the same number? I mean, it's, 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 it's just part of analyze, analyzing these numbers. Okay. <clears throat> so, but what does that mean then in particular about this period of time? is 8.3333 years. So eight and a third years, if it's divided by three, gives me a number that's related to the length of the month. So, People see, I mean, I know it's it's a little bit of a math thing, but. Can, can you explain to me um, why you added the first three and divided it by three? Okay, so what I was looking at, as I said, there's three messages, and they're going to occur. They're going to be in a period of time, right? But each of those messages is given a specific number, seven years, eight years, and ten years. So the idea was, is if I add them together, and I find out what the average length of time, maybe it would relate to the period of time that we already had marked from April 5th, 2030, right? Thank you. Okay, so that, that's the way my brain was thinking. Now- Thank you. Dwight multiplied them and divided them by three, and we got a number that approaches 187, which, which is- and, and why did he multiply them? Because we can sometimes add numbers and sometimes multiply them. Yeah. Okay. So basically, that's how I work. My stuff is is all as I'm seeing these numbers laid out. 
uh, I'll add them or subtract them or divide them or, uh, and to see what numbers come up in the relationship. You know, I mean, you've got six numbers, you know, or four numbers and you, you do it in 16 different ways. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so now we're looking at this calculation. So I added these three years together. These Theodore, three years. can I ask you a question? Um, why, why did Dwight add 7, 10, and 8? I didn't add 7, 10, and 8. I, I mean, I mu multiplied them. I'm sorry. The reason, as, as Theodore was adding them, we've, we've had conversations in the past about using different numbers additively or multiplicativity. And my point at times has been to add the numbers together and Theodore's has usually been to multiply them. Okay, I just curious. I just wanted to know. Sure. Just like the gematria of Lamech, you know, we can add it together, but if we multiply it, we get one eight seven two zero. Right. Okay. Right. All right. All right. <clears throat> but, I mean, but, so here we have this period of time. So right. this period of time. We have multiplied it by a year, right? That is, we took these 25, we divided it by three, and then we multiplied it by a year. And then we divided it by, um, and if you divide a year by 12, you get this period of time. So the question is, why are we getting this number that is the length of the Gregorian month or a hundred times the length of the Gregorian month? Is, is there something that's just natural? That is, if I took another number, right? So here's what I'll do. I'll just take another arbitrary number. I'll take 145, right? So that's, um, or maybe I'll do this. I'll just do 44. I'll divide it by three and I'll get this number, right? So this number is not related to anything. It's just a number. And then I'm going to multiply this number uh, times 365.25 when I get this number, whatever that number is, right? Now, that number doesn't relate to um, the length of a month in any way, right? Right, but it's got a whole lot of sixes behind it. Yeah, I know. Well, that's just yeah. So it's that's <laughs> two thirds. It's fourteen and two thirds, right? Um, but when I took this eight three three, I did get a number that was related to the length of a month, a hundred times the length of a Gregorian month. So what Iran is saying is twelve times eight thirds equals 100. So that's why, right? So he's saying that what we're doing is we're producing something that is a hundred. So we're just, and then if I take the number 365, so what I, what I have to do here is I have to take this number then, um, where, where's my calculation that I had here? Uh, okay, so 365 divided by 12 um, ends up being this number, which is the length of a month. And so it just has to do with the fact that this 8.33 is related to – can you explain it around? I'm terrible at explaining math things. Um, wrote yeah, just basically, if you multiply 12 and 8 and a third together, you get 100. Right, right. So so what I'm trying to say is that this number, 8 and a third, that we get is, it's not, it's, it, it's a very specific number, right? Like, th like it wouldn't happen with some other number. So, so this number, this what this calculation that we did, symbolically is it's highly unlikely that we're going to add three numbers together, 
divide them by three and get a number that is, if multiplied by 12, will equal 100, right? Correct, Duran? Right. That this isn't inevitable. It's it's something that has to do with this specific calculation that we did. And so when I then noticed that it was, when I multiplied it by 365, I got a number that was 100 times greater than the length of the month. That was not... Um, that was not something that you would expect from a number that we just randomly used. That is, we took the number 7, 8, and 10, added them together, divided them by 3, and we got this number. So, so this, is, this would be a remarkable coincidence, right? Yeah. Okay, so this isn't something that's inevitable. It doesn't happen with any number. All right. So this is a sp so that's the point I'm trying to to make here by looking at this. If we do it with another number, we're not going to get the same result. So we have to have those sp specific numbers that make up 187. Um, another way of looking at it. So I know people who don't like math this can be rather. But if I took. Um, uh, okay, well, and, and the thing is, we have to do it as 10, right? We couldn't, we just couldn't add up 1, 8, 7, you know, get 16, and we wouldn't do that. So it's taking this as a 10. The way that the Jews write a number is they don't write 18. They write 10 or, um, yeah, 10 and 8 to write 18, right? So they're going to write, you know, seven years. And they're going to write 10 years and they're going to write eight years and we can add those together. So, and then we get this, this number, right? 25 and we divide it by three because of there's three of them and we're taking the average and we get this number that if uh, multiplied uh, by 10 or by 12, we get a hundred, right? So, so that's the, that's the coincidence. Okay, I hope. And it's been my experience. There are no coincidences in well, the Bible. Uh, well, there's no coincidences in the Bible. There are coincidences. Just... Coincidences happen. Um, now, the number of days that I got. In... Besides all that, did, uh, if we don't like learning math, we need to learn it anyway. Don't you think? If we don't well, like doing this, we got to learn it anyway, right? It's yeah. advantageous. Yeah. <clears throat> well, our situation is pretty direct. Do we believe Daniel 8.13 and 8.14? I mean, that certain saint which spake, the, the actual Hebrew is that of a wonderful numberer. So right. are numbers important to Christ? Okay. Yes. Now you can Amen. see, I just did, so I took this number here, I'll go back, I'll go to 2030 again. Well, just for a second, before you go to 2030. Yeah. Giving you a quick support. Bringing up Daniel 813. Yeah. Is that also not a different way of expressing eight and one third? Okay. So eight, eight, 13 is eight and one third. Right. In a sense. Yes. Cause you could write, you could write eight and one third. So does that not support the calculation you just presented where we have 8.333 to infinity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we can see this 8.33 is a symbol of, of 8.13 then. Okay, so if we apply it directly with Daniel 8.13, we are applying it in reference to the wonderful number. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it does to me. M me too. Okay. 
Um, so if I if I go to April 5th, 2030, and I subtract 3043, so it's it's 3043.75. I mean, I could put that in, I guess. Right. So I'm going to subtract that number that we got. A number of days. And that's going to be bring me to December 4th, 2021. I don't know what that means, particularly. Um, because we, we don't mark that date. But it is about one year after 2020. Right? December 4th, 5th, and 6th, 2020. So we have this one year anniversary, so to speak. So that's one way in which I could look at that. You know, I could, I could, it brings us back into this history. But that's initially how I was thinking to look at it is taking the number of days. But we, we can just take this as a symbol itself without having to do this, right? That is, we can look at what's here in this period of time, and we can see this relates to the wonderful number. It relates to these, these symbols. Now, eight and a third years is what we end up getting as the average, right? And, and that can be a symbol of... 813, right? Eight and a third, which can be the digits 813. So I, I would think that's fairly remarkable as well. So we've learned something here about uh, what this message is about of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. It's actually an establishment of the message. That, that, that this movement has been following from the beginning, right? Right. And, and it connects us to Millerite history. I mean, April 5th, 2030 is connected to Millerite history from April 19th, 1844, 2300 months to April 5th, 2030. And we have all kinds of other ways in which we arrived at that, the week of Christ, etc. cetera. So, so here we have um, in these insignificant judges that nobody really pays any attention to. We have all of these symbols that relate to our understanding of chronology and of numbers. Because it has these numbers here, right? And and the 30, 30, 30, we can relate to, of course, as we saw to 666, 777, 273, and also to 1111, right? So, so 1111 is January 11th, 2023. Yeah, though, I know I'm slow, but I'm going to mention it. You, if you drop to zero. What? If you drop the 0333. Is that what you're saying? I, I can't hear you, William. All I heard is you dropped the zero and then you dropped off. If you drop the zero, you have a test. The 10 would be a test, right? On the 100. Oh, from 100? Yeah. 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 But we, yeah, we already have a test here. I mean, so we know that this message, the message of July 18th, is a type of test for this movement, right? Right. It's already established. And we know, of course, it symbolizes from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So it symbolizes the Day of Atonement, which is, is judgment, um, which is a test, of course. But we have all of these different symbols, the 30, 30, 30, the 40 and 30, as well as the 70, which is three score and 10. Right. So three score is is 20, 20, 20 plus 10 to get 70. Right. So they go 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10. That's the way they they do this. Now, in this case, if you look at um, the Hebrew, it just says 70. So uh, it's not using three score and 10 in Hebrew to do this. They just use the word 70, the shibium. 
Um, anything else that we can see here regarding, I mean, we got abdon, which means servitude, and hillel, which means praising, right? So we, we've looked at that. Um, anything else that we're not looking at? Yeah, the uh, 560, you know, if you multiply them, 10 yeah. times 7 times 8. Yeah. There was a, a 560 days for the siege uh, in Jerusalem from 587 to 586. It was 560 days. Yeah, so you're saying from the siege in 587 BC, which was on. Uh, um, that was on January 5th. Five. Yeah. And then you count 560 days. And that brings you to the siege. That's an, in, that's, uh, yeah. So that brings you to the siege. And that uh, July 18th, isn't it? At the end July of the five, six. Yeah. So that's when the walls are broken down. It brings you to July 18th. Yeah. Not, not on our calendar converter, though, because our calendar converter converter uh is actually incorrect but with with that because it's we're using the um uh, the, the babylonian calendar yeah so it's so actually july 19th calendar, it brings you to the ninth day of the fourth month tammuz it brings you to july 18 so i'll just show people this here if you want to see this <clears throat> So what we did is we went from the siege in 587, which was January 5th. And of course, that's going to be on uh, the Julian calendar here. And that's going to be the 10th day of the 10th month on the Babylonian calendar down here. All right. So we got the Babylonian calendar. Oops. Right here, 10th day of the 10th month. Right. 10th month, 10th day. It's the same on the uh, rabbinic, the same on the biblical. They all happen to line up at that in that year. And then we just count 560 days. And that's going to bring us to... Um, so this is an inclusive count, right? So that means from the first day to this day. So this is Tammuz 9. So... You can see that this is going to be July 18th. You can see the biblical calendar wasn't being used there. They're using we're using the Babylonian calendar. Ezekiel's in Babylon, right? So we got July 18th, 586. That's when the walls of Jerusalem come down. They're breached. They're broken. Okay. So that's fairly interesting. Okay. Um any other thoughts on this? these points here? You were saying the walls of Jerusalem. We, we also represent the walls of Jerusalem as the Sabbath and the um, marriage, right? Well, um, yeah, they're walls. Um, I, I guess you could relate it there. Um, I mean, I normally think of the law, you know, the law is a wall. The walls of Jerusalem, of course, come down because of their transgression of the law. You know, and if we go back to Judges 10, where we had, um, oh, that's Daniel, Judges 10, um, dealing with Tola and Jair, um, we had these two periods of time. One was 23 years and the other was 22 years. And we never really dealt with that too much other than we knew that these are both symbols, symbols of the 2300 days and symbols of restoration, right? Um, so they relate right. to, to the studies that we have. But then we have the 30, the 30, and the 30 again. And so, so we have that symbol. 
in, in this story. So we can see that they're connected, but we have these other periods of, of years, right? So it's a different period of years, right? The other one is um, 25 years altogether. These ones are 45 years altogether. Now, altogether, that's 70 years. So would that be significant? So if we're going to say that they're representing the same period, and, and, and Judges 10.1, of course, starts on the first day of the 10th month. That's the divorce. That's going to be at the end of January 11th. So is, is all of this representing this period of time from the end of our line, just showing us what happens after January 11th? I mean, it's a period of time. It's not like, you know, something magical has to happen on January 11th, in, in my understanding. We're not looking for some specific event. But we are saying that this movement is going to uh, continue to study. And we have these symbols, 23, 22, 45, 30, 30 times 3. And and we can we can add that to the period of Judges twelve, dealing with uh, those three guys, Ibzan, uh, and uh, what their names are Elon and um, Abdon. Abdon, that's it. Yeah, right. So we can add them together. We get a period of seventy years. And if we divided that by five, we would get the symbol of 14, right? Which is just seven plus seven. So, so does that help tie those together? It's going to take some time to consider that. Okay, but we already we already established that these are the same periods, right? This is right. The, this marks the same point. This marks our movement after January eleventh as a symbol, not necessarily literally that day, because what's being marked is the divorce, right? The eighty-eight days, which is 88 months, which brings us to April 5th, 2030, 2,640 days, right? So, so we already have these symbols and, and we can put these here and we're already putting the other ones there. So I don't see how we could, um, we could not continue to do this that we that we could somehow i mean they, they're the same symbol they're tied together all together they're 70 years even though they're separated you know literally in in time um when we put when we lay them line upon line they add up to 70 years we have all these other symbols so I think that we can do this. I think that this would make sense because we already understand it this way. So then what happens um, tomorrow is we're going to look at Samson again. And, and of course, Samson's this ironic line, and we just haven't drawn it on a line yet. So um, I'm going to need to draw out uh, well, you know, we're going to have to draw this here. What I did with um, the end of this period is that we have this one year period from 2021 to 2022. Um, 
which has to do with our invitation. But now this next part is just after that. So it, it's basically, again, everything's just leading us to, to 2023. And then that's, that's where the book of Judges is leading us to. It's not giving us really light beyond there as far as it points us to, to 2030. That we have this application for additional extension of time uh, to pay our taxes to Caesar. Right. Yeah, if we had the money to pay. <laughs> yeah, well, and then we're going to deal with the birth of Samson, which happens in um, Judges 13, which is a symbol of rebellion. Right. So that's where we're going to look tomorrow. So people need to look at that again. Um, and we can start trying to draw Samson on a line. I mean, we already sort of know what we're doing with Samson. We just didn't act, actually draw it on a line. And I, I don't want to go through it in too much detail again, because that's been fairly recent since we did Samson. But um, we had a better idea by the time we did Samson on how, how to put these lines together. So any final comments? None at the moment. So let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful, Lord, for what you have shown us here this morning. We understand our responsibility. Um, and we just ask, Lord, for continued guidance in um, our invitation, our plans for making an invitation to the American and Canadian groups uh, to study together to examine these things we know lord we need your holy spirit to work upon not just their hearts but our own and we ask for wisdom please be with each person watch over them and continue to guide our feet we pray and ask in jesus name amen